Hello everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to build a rectangle in Minecraft. But like, the cool way, where you automate it with redstone. This contraption right here is able to build a rectangular platform of any width and any length, and it doesn't even use that much redstone. Even better, it doesn't even require solid blocks. It is able to work with slabs, for example, or even... Yeah, just promise me you won't use this for anything too responsible. Ultimately, it works with every single block in the game that could be pushed by pistons, except for these ones right here. And yeah, sadly, that does include sand and gravel, so no deleting any lakes with this thing. However, probably some of the best uses for this are that you can use it for directional blocks in case you want them to all be the same direction, especially if you want them vertical, because yeah, placing all those would have been a nightmare to do otherwise. You can also use dropper randomness to create a random pattern, such as this elegant mess. Or you can hook it up to any kind of stone generator to make it truly automatic. Now just to be clear, yeah, this thing only works on Minecraft Java Edition. If you are on Bedrock, this contraption will not work. However, here's the thing, you see, I like to play both sides, and only having a platform builder on Java just was not going to cut it for me. So, I'll be releasing a Bedrock video in a few days. Make sure you unsubscribe if you want to miss that. Now, let's talk about how this thing works. The main underlying concept in all of this is this sort of conveyor concept, where you push blocks under it, and then it scooches them further along. The main idea here is first we fill in the gap and then we use the block behind it to push that further and pull it back leaving a gap again. And we can chain this together to push the blocks as far as we could possibly need to. But this obviously only makes lines, though no problem. To make a surface we'll just create a lot of lines right next to each other. And that brings us to this device right here. Uh, if we clear that away, you'll see that, yeah, it has that same conveyor concept in its core, but now with a bit of extra blocks. Just like before, every time a block moves under it, it scooches it on a little further, but you may have noticed this sticky piston. So yeah, every time we push a block, we also attempt to grab this slime block. Of course, because the sticky piston keeps moving the slime block, it's not able to. Well, that is, of course, unless it's just not able to extend, in which case, that allows us to just advance to the next row. And, well, normally we wouldn't have obsidian triggering this, but simply, well, the row being full beyond that point. You may have also noticed it leaves a little gap here. Well, good news is it actually gets out of the way fast enough that the previous extension will be able to fill it in before it also gets stuck and moves to the next row. Combining all the parts so far, we have the ability to push it as far as we want in this direction, and then we can extend it as far as we need to in this direction. But that still leaves one important detail. We actually need to start pushing it off to the side. And well, that is the part that gave me by far the most trouble. At first, this may seem like, you know, this shouldn't be too hard. Just like the row extensions, just every time a block comes in, try to push it, and also try to move forward. And just make sure that those happen in a way where once it fills up, then it moves forward. And I mean, like, yeah, I mean, this sure seems to work just fine. But, uh, well, there's one little problem. You remember these conveyors from earlier? Yeah, the, uh, the row starter. And the conveyors are kind of trying to activate the same blocks at the same time. And they absolutely like to mess with each other. One of the easiest things we can do to help them not interfere with each other is instead of building these conveyors correctly, we can just build them incorrectly, which means that they do not work. Well, unless a piston were to go and push this block back over, then it would start working. And yeah, that is exactly what the row starter does. Once it reaches a point where the conveyor is safe to use, it finishes assembling it. However, this does present a, a new problem. You see, the way these conveyors work, they have this gap after them so that the previous one can push the blocks in. 
However, if we just finished assembling one of these things, there is not going to be a gap after it. And yeah, that means that, well, first these blocks are going to move, but then they're going to immediately move again. But because you can't move already moving blocks, that tells the row starter that it is time to move to the next row. My first solution that I came up with was to use a butted piston setup, kind of like this one. You may have seen me using it throughout the video so far. And yeah, it's nice and compact, which also makes it easy to move. And yeah, here we have such a device. Uh, you may notice it is a little bulky, but it does everything we need to. Every time a block appears in front of it, it pushes the blocks forward. It also finishes assembling the conveyors. And well, in this case, it's more so that if a block gets pushed past this point, then it's going to advance to the next row. And what's nice about using a butted piston is because of just how update order works when moving blocks, uh, that means this piston always has priority over this one. So this piston did try to fire, but this one was already moving, so it was not able to. And yeah, this works pretty well. Uh, you know, slight downside, it is pretty big, but also more importantly, it requires you to build below the platform, which is something I wanted to try to avoid as, well, I mean, building downwards is not easy. But by far the biggest problem is because this butted piston setup has to be built in a very specific way, and then you also have to make sure to not update that piston, you put this sort of thing in a build tutorial and you're going to get a lot of comments from people politely informing you that they did not follow the instructions. So naturally, you know, let's try to fix that. Turns out observers do work pretty well. You just have to make sure to put a little delay over here so that after it moves forward, it's not able to move forward again for a brief period of time. After all, I mean, all the blocks are coming in at a nice constant rate, so that shouldn't cause any problems. But here's where things started going really downhill. Recorded pretty much the entire video and then realized that this part right here is actually directional. Though I kind of had to re-record it anyways because the video quality was really bad. But yeah, it turns out it wasn't actually too hard to fix. An observer directly observing another observer always triggers before an observer indirectly observing that observer, which makes controlling the update order pretty easy here. And yeah, there, there goes all of the directionality problems recorded pretty much the entire video again. And the, oh, hey, uh, th this part's directional as well. We're, we're powering these two sticky pistons at the same time. And yeah, yeah, it's directional. But good news is I actually realized that in time and the solution used the exact same parts as was promised in the material list. So all is well. And yeah, at that point it was fully consistent. Remember when I said that we can just put a delay on and you know assume that the block stream will be perfectly consistent? Well, uh, that works pretty well for a stone generator or if you have a carpet mod fake player placing the blocks. But turns out if you have a real player placing those blocks, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of lag between the player and the server. And every once in a while, the player ends up not placing the block in time and it will skip a block. And that means it has a small chance of failing. And at this point, I was pretty much ready to give up. But then I realized instead of using a delay, we use a binary counter. As you can see, it's able to push the blocks and then if we block that, it moves forward. And then this does a weird thing. But now, here's where the magic happens. No matter how long of a delay you have between the blocks, it goes one block, two blocks, three blocks, and only starting on the fourth block does it actually start trying to pull. That makes the whole thing reliable. And no, that was not foreshadowing this time. This time it really is reliable. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that this design does not appear in the intro. That is because I could not be bothered to record that thing again. All right, let's get on to the tutorial. Uh, before we can get to a material list, though, because this is a dynamic sized thing, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of math. First, make sure you know how big of a rectangle you want. In this case, I will be using 50 by 80. Take the smaller of the two numbers, subtract 4, divide by 10, and ignore everything past the decimal. That is the number of row extensions you will need. 
Now take the larger dimension, add 3, divide by 7, and remove everything past the decimal, and that is how many column extensions you will need. And if you're placing the blocks manually, the minimum number of blocks to fill the whole thing up is going to be the area of the rectangle plus the number of row extensions plus 5. And for the materials, uh, let's start by getting this part out of the way. Any regular blocks such as netherrack, anything that'll stop a piston, any trap door, any pronouns, any leaves, do not use honey. And that applies to the entire contraption. You remember those two numbers we just calculated? Well, you will need all of this for each of the row extensions and this for each column extension. You're also going to want a whole lot of moss or leaves for scaffolding, and I definitely recommend using moss or leaves because if you use something like netherrack and just leave it in, it's going to break, and if you try to remove it manually, it also breaks. So yeah, use moss or leaves. And in case you're tired of having to add together multiple chests, good news, the rest all fits into a single list based on what you're wanting to use. If you want to place the blocks manually, this is what you will need though uh, you'll only need the leaves and water if you want to include concrete conversion at the same time, and the wooden trapdoors are only in case you want to place a directional block vertically while way up in the sky. And of course, don't forget extra hoppers and chests to hold all of your items. Here's all the supplies you'll need if you want to use a cobblestone generator, likewise for limestone, and basalt. The first thing you'll want to do is take your moss and trace out two sides of the rectangle. And to be clear, this is the inner border of said rectangle. And you want it to look exactly like this, a backwards L shape, where this is the short side and this is the long side. Next up, unless you're way up in the sky, you may have a few blocks that you need to clear out. First of all, uh, from the long side, you'll need to remove everything six blocks out, three blocks up, as well as this four block trench right below it. And that needs to extend from seven blocks before the beginning and all the way to two blocks past the end. However, for the trench specifically, good news, if there's anything like bedrock, obsidian, or liquids, you do not have to remove those. Uh, other blocks still need to go though. After that, you'll also need to make sure that the entire width of the platform is cleared going four blocks up in total starting one block before the beginning and extending to five blocks past the end. Now that you've got all that cleared out, grab a bunch of observers, a bunch of moss, and your obsidian or furnace or whatever, and go to the far end of the short side. From here, you're going to need to have a 13 block gap and then an upwards observer. The way I like to count that out is just one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the observer. And now you just need another observer every 10 blocks all the way until the end. So one, two, three, four, observer. And then, yeah, just repeat that all the way until the very next observer would go beyond the end. And once you're done with that, there is a chance you might have to do a little bit of adjusting. If the final observer was in either of these two locations, you'll need to move it over to here. All right, let's do the long side. First of all, go one, two, three, and then an observer. And then you're going to go backwards. One, two three, four, and then an observer on that block. And now you want to repeat this every seven blocks. One, two, three, observer. Yeah, just like that, all the way to the end. And once the next one would go beyond the edge, uh, just go ahead and place your furnace or whatever right here. And then wherever the final observer is, you can actually just remove it. You don't actually need that one. Just a reminder, it is very important that you got all of those spacings right, otherwise you will get a wrong size platform, or it just will not work. But once you have done all that, good news, no more counting or adjusting, now we can just get to building. First of all, going back along the long side, on each of these observers, just do sticky piston, slime block, and then one block off to the side like that and yeah just do that for every single one of these and just to be clear that does include the one that is before the platform even starts now for the row extensions this very well might be the part that takes you the longest start by bridging out one temporary block there and then a sticky piston and now come over here trap door and then place that with an observer and then jump in 
place an observer here, and if that is a wooden platform, do not fall to your death. Now go ahead and place slime there, there, and then this L shape. Next, come over here, sticky piston, normal piston, and then come back up and slime block, slime, one, two, one, diagonal over to another slime block, normal piston, sticky piston, and an observer. And that is the whole thing. And yeah, just repeat that all the way to the end. Once you are done with all of that, it is now time for the uh, row starter thing. Start with the observer there, piston, redstone block, don't worry about it moving, slime block, regular piston right there. Now place redstone block and a block there. This needs to not be a slime block. And yeah, that moved, don't worry. Now create an L shape like so and put a sticky piston right there. Now over here, observer, regular block, and sticky piston. And now temporary block over to get that observer. And now do these two slime blocks, and then this L shape, and a regular piston there, sticky piston, and observer. Now go right here and bridge over to this spot. You'll want a sticky piston, two slime blocks, just two observers just right on top of each other, and a regular piston. Now for the rest, we will do this in two parts. First, the manual block placement, and then the stone generator. So feel free to skip to the next chapter if you wanted the stone generator. For manual block placement, first come over here, and if you wanted to do concrete conversion, place a waterlogged leaf block. And if you did not want to do concrete conversion, just place a regular block. Next, if you needed a block right there to place directional blocks vertically, take your trap doors, place one right there and one right there. Open that, come to the edge, close it, and then place a block, and there you go. Either way, place a block there and a piston there. Now go over here and go one, two, three, and expand that into a two by three. Now place a dust. Sticky piston, redstone block, repeater on two ticks, and a block. Then place a block there and make this lightning shape, observer, and dust. Now uh, go ahead and fill in this oval shape right here. Then place a torch here, drop her here, and build that up one more block. Now go and place one block there. And now it's time to go ahead and get all the hoppers and double chests you may need in order to hold all the blocks and then fill it up. Now, before we actually go ahead and run this thing, you don't necessarily have to empty your inventory, but absolutely make sure that whatever block you are planning to place, you do not have any of it anywhere in your inventory except for exactly one of it in your first hotbar slot. You'll also want an extra block a redstone dust, and if applicable, a tool to get out when you're done. Once you're ready to get started, go ahead and place dust there. Hop in and close off the roof so that nothing can get to you. And now uh, just get into place and start placing the blocks. It'll give you an extra block each time you successfully place one. And then if you don't want to sit here holding right click for a really long time, then while holding right click, press F3 and T and let go of right click while that loading bar loads. And now, uh, yep, yeah, hands are completely off the keyboard and mouse. You can just go do something else for a while, such as touch some gra- You know what? I'll just hold right click for a few hours. Anyways, once you're done, you can just press right click and you will stop placing blocks again. And to turn off the thing, you can just break this dust. And that also works for if you need to temporarily turn it off in case like a, the server is about to restart, for example. For the stone generators, they're all pretty similar, so we'll just do them all at once. Start by coming right here and go out one, two, three, and now place a piston right there. Now go out one more block and put an observer and a regular block there. And then whatever block you plan to be generating, go ahead and put it right there. This next part is different based on which type of stone you wanted. If you wanted the limestone, go out one, two, in each of these three directions. 
Now place a piston on each end. Fill in these spots right here. Fill in these walls. Uh, don't worry about that piston, it will be fine. Fill in this wall right here. And now place a water there and a water there. For cobblestone, it starts off pretty similar to limestone. Start by going out two in each direction and place a piston on each of the ends. Now go ahead and place a waterlogged leaf on both sides of this. And well, that's it. For basalt, you're going to bridge out two blocks, but the first one is going to be a sole soil. And then, as you may have guessed, place a piston on each end. And finally, uh, place a blue ice on both sides right here. From here on out, they are all the same again. So whichever one it was, we'll place a block there if it isn't already, and then go up another block and place a downward piston like that. Now come over to here and place this W shape like so, and then repeat that right here, and then go ahead and place a block there and a block there, and you should have three holes. Next, place dust all along this and a dust right there. And now if you did everything correctly, you should be able to place a lava there and not worry about it spilling all over the place. Now from here, go out one, two, three, four, and make that match. So it should go out three blocks in total and place a regular block right there. Now place a repeater on two ticks of delay right there and another right there. Redstone dust, sticky piston, and redstone block. And you should be pretty much ready to go. Once you're ready to start it, just place a redstone there and it will start building your platform. Well, that is all for today. Thank you for watching my tutorial on building a rectangle. A button reminder, but more importantly, trans rights are human rights.